Hey everyone, in this video I'll be walking you through how to create an app for a coffee shop. This tutorial should apply for a restaurant, a small CPG business, or an e-commerce store as well. This tutorial is ideal for those of you looking to build apps for your local small businesses and for those looking to understand what's possible in Flutterflow. Building in Flutterflow is actually incredibly powerful since you can deploy to iOS, Android, and the web using one database as your business expands, export your code to developers if needed, or you can also consult our Flutterflow experts to help you build. We will cover how to create a database for inventory and users in Firebase, connecting the database to a pre-existing UI, and how to create custom functions for subtotal and total order. You can grab the pre-existing Flutterflow project in the description and follow along, or simply watch to understand how Flutterflow can be used to build your application. I won't be covering Firebase setup in this tutorial, and I'll be linking the well-documented Firebase tutorial in the description. With that, let's start with this base UI. We have about six pages, the Create Profile page, the Profile Home, the Menu page, the Product Details page, and finally the Checkout page. Now, for this UI, a lot of the UI has been set up, but there are multiple fields that have not been connected to the database. So we're gonna set up the collections, which will hold the inventory and the users for our application. And it's going to be able to pull directly from the Firebase. You can easily update the data whenever you like. Let's jump in. So first, I'm gonna create a users collection. Flutterflow recognizes this and populates some of these fields for us. I'm going to go ahead and add in daily coffees as a data point that we'll be able to ask for the user or calculate on the back end and keep track of. I'm also going to go ahead and add an average rating. This could be an average rating for a coffee or a menu item that the user gives into the application or that we're calculating on the back end. But you can add in any variables that you want to keep track of in your application. Great, so now we're done with this user's collection, which will hold all of our user data. So now let's go ahead and move on and create a new collection for menu items. This will hold all the information for all of our inventory. And Flutterflow nicely populates some fields for us that we can actually use. Um, let's go ahead and add in maybe a few more here. Let's say the product photo and use that, set that as the image path. Also, let's set up a list of modifiers and another list of modifiers. This will be for details that the user will want to add, such as 16 ounce coffee or 12 ounce coffee, whole milk versus almond milk, things like that. Let's create another collection called carts. This will be a essentially a holding spot for the cart of an individual user. So I'm going to set up one, a user reference. So a cart will refer to a user. I'm going to set up the item count for the number of items within a cart for a user. Whether or not the cart is active as a Boolean, true or false. The subtotal as a field element. And finally, a list of cart items. We haven't created the, second the fourth collection yet, so let's set that up. I'm going to create a item details collection. And essentially, this is going to take the form of a customized menu item by the user. So we can also go ahead and use the product template here as well. And let's go ahead and make some edits here. We don't need modified. Um, we're going to take out sale price and on price, although you can add this in later depending on your business. And let's add a cart reference. That way each item can be referred to by a document cart. Let's also add a menu, add a menu item reference. This will be the original menu item that is referred to or modified by the customer. And let's add some modifier lists. Once again, these were referred to modifications on the item, which I'll showcase later. And obviously a menu item photo. This will just be a simple image path. And let's go ahead and add back in cart items. And we'll set this up as a list of document references of the item detail collection. And now we have our four different collections in our database. Let's go ahead and actually add in some of these menu items that will showcase on our menu. So I'm going to go into Flutterflow's own Firebase data manager, and I'm going to add in some menu documents. So let's create maybe a, an espresso. Make up a description here, a Colombian blend. 
with hints of chocolate. Yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> no specification needed here. Price, let's just go ahead and set it for, let's say, 250 And we can leave some of these blank if we're not using them, but this will allow you to also see that there's multiple different ways you can actually set up your database. You can even add a quantity for a certain number of items in your stock, for example. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to add in a URL for the photo so that we have something to represent the espresso. And we can go ahead and move on. I'm going to also add in T as well in the same manner here. Great, now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and move on to connecting the database to the UI. Let's navigate to the profile page and click on the Save Changes button. So let's open that up and let's add an action. And the first action we're gonna add will be the authentication to create an account within Firebase. So we're gonna do that using email and that'll take the form of the email widget. Password will take password, password validation will take password validation, and we're gonna create a user document as well whenever someone clicks on save changes. Now, what I'm doing here is essentially setting the fields that will be provided by the user to the document. And some of these we don't actually need. Let's take away the phone, let's take away that, let's take away UID. We're also gonna go ahead and take away email here since it'll be set in the create account action. Let's go ahead and set our display name up. So select from variable and let's go into widget state and select your name. Let's go to photo URL, same thing, from variable, widget state, and the uploaded file. Let's set our daily coffees as a specific, specific value as three, but you can set it as a variable if you choose to do so. And let's do our average rating for a coffee for the user as, let's say 4.8. Once a user is created within the account, we also want to create a cart that is associated with that user. So we're going to do create document as a backend call. And we're going to create this within the carts collection. And similar to the last um, action, we're going to make sure that the fields are set properly. So let's go ahead and start with the user reference field. And we're going to set this to the authenticated user that has just created an account. Now let's also go ahead and set item count. This will take the form of just zero for now actually, since um, no items have been added. The cart will start off as being not active, so the boolean will take false. And the subtotal will start off as being zero. Now let's go ahead and set another action, and this action will navigate us to the profile home. And that is the completion of our first page, which is the create profile page. Great, so now that we have that page done, let's move on to profile home. So just a few updates here. So let's go ahead and route these fields to our database. Let's go into authenticated user and select your name. And let's go to the same thing for daily coffees, authenticated user, and then pull the daily coffees field. Now let's do the final same thing for average rating, authenticated user, and then pull the field for average rating. And lastly, we can make changes to our text by going over to the properties panel. I'm just going to change these to subtitle 2 to make sure readability is much better on this screen. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the rest of this just as a visual for right now. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and move on to the menu page. Now what we also want to do here is make sure that when a user selects one of the menu items, the data from that specific menu item populates within the product details page on the next page. So I'm going to add an action here to navigate to the product details page. And I want to add a parameter on the same page. Let me select that again and I'm going to define a parameter. It takes you to the page that the parameter is going to pass to in order to create a parameter. So I'm going to create a parameter for a product selection and I'm going to select it as a document from the menu items collection. 
and now it's set up and we can pass it within that specific action. Setting this up as a many document as well. And now whenever a user selects that specific product, it will populate within the product details page. Now, last thing that we need to do here is make sure that the category name fields that are on the screen right now are actually populated by real data. So I'm going to change category name, set from variable, go to menu document, and set the name there. And I also want to showcase the description. I'm going to change this to menu items. And I'm just going to take this out for right now. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and change it from description to price. That way the user can see the price of the item whenever they land on the menu page. OK, great. Now let's move on to the product details page. And what we're going to do here is query the collection for the cart that is attributed to this user. So I'm going to query collection on the page to use the carts collection. And I'm actually going to filter here by the user reference that we had originally set equal to the user authentication, making sure that the cart that this item will be attributed to is attributed to the user that is authenticated and signed in. OK, great. Now that we have the cart query set up, let's go ahead and quickly route some of these fields to the database, such as product name, price, and description. So I'm going to set the variable to the parameter that we passed and the name field. I'm going to do the same for the price. And finally, the same for the description of the item, all being passed from the product selection parameter. Great. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and set up our final action for this page, and which is the Add to Cart button. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Action Editor here. And we're going to add three actions to this editor. The first action we're going to add is we're going to make sure that when a user selects Add to Cart, a specific item details document is created. So I'm going to query the collection for the item details. And I'm going to open up all these fields. Once again, Flutterflow is populating this from the Firebase. And some of these we don't need, such as specifications. So I'm going to take that out. But for example, name, I'm going to do from variable, query it from the product selection, and set the name once again. I'm going to do the same for the description. Same for the price as well from variable and then from the product selections parameter and set it from the price field of that parameter. For quantity, we're going to set the quantity of this item based on the widget state or the action the user takes on the count controller. Great. We're going to make sure that we set the cart reference here to the carts document that we filtered in query at the beginning. For the menu items reference, we're going to reference it based on the parameter that was passed. The modifiers here will essentially take the value of the specifications that the user inputs, such as 16 or 12 ounces, whole milk or almond milk, and any other modifications to the item that they want to make when ordering. So I'm going to go ahead and set value and set it to the widget state and the modifier. I'm going to do the same for modifier 1. Once again, these could be the milk modifiers, the size modifiers, anything that works based on the application you're building. And lastly, setting the menu item photo to the parameter 
photo, making sure that that's all aligned. Fantastic, and no errors so far. So let's go ahead and continue and move on to our next action. Now, since a user is creating a custom item document and wants to add it to the cart, we're going to update the cart collection and we're going to select reference here. And now we're going to populate the fields and update these fields based on the selection that the user has made. Some of these we don't need, such as user reference, since it's already set. We will need to increment the item count based on the selection that the user makes. So we're going to, I'm going to select increment here from variable, and I'm going to choose the widget state of the count controller. Now cart active, cart is default false and not active when the user creates an account. So now I'm going to set it to true, which means our cart is officially active once they added their first item. And lastly, subtotal, we're actually going to increment this um, for now based on the price of the item. This is obviously not the actual subtotal, and I'm going to come back and adjust this when we do custom functions later on in the tutorial. So for now, I'm just going to set it as increment from variable and from the parameter of the product selection. And lastly, we have our cart items field, which is a list of the item details. So for this one, we want to make sure that we add the item that the user has previously created. So I don't have the source available here. So what I'm going to do is actually go back to the first action that we created. And I'm going to create the output of this action, which will be item in cart. And now I'm going to make sure that the action output is set up to be added to the set of cart items. And lastly, we'll add our last action, which is simply to navigate to the checkout page. And those are all the actions that we're going to add here for the add to cart button. Now let's go back and make sure that we have everything. I'm going to go ahead and set up this back button action. So just navigate back. And that's all we need for this page. We can go ahead and move on to the checkout page. Now that we're on this page, we're going to do a similar query as a product details page. We're going to query on the cart that matches our user authentication. So same steps. Filter one is going to be user reference is equal to from variable authentication and user reference. And that will take care of the overall query for this cart. Now we're going to query the list view. Before doing this, make sure that the list view is a product of the row product and that the product container is a, is a child of the list view. Now go ahead and go to query, query collection, query on item detail, and we're going to filter here based on the cart reference of the item detail. So cart reference equal to, and we're going to make sure it matches the overall cart reference that we queried previously. I know the terminology can get a little bit confusing here, but this is what's going to allow us to actually pull the correct items from the cart. And now we're going to jump into making sure that the fields here are representative of the item details document. So one of the steps that we performed before, making sure that we're setting the variable, querying by the item details document, and making sure that those connections have been set. And I'm going to go ahead and set this up as subtotal, even though it's not the appropriate number, just to make sure that we're actually retrieving the appropriate data here. Network set from variable, item details document, and then the menu item photo. Now let's jump into setting up our custom functions. And we had set up the subtotal whenever we first created an item details document. So I'm going to go back to that location within the action editor and where we actually set up the subtotal. And now instead of price, we're going to create and set 
a custom function here. Let's go ahead and let's maybe call it base price for right now. And it's they were it's going to return a double, which will be the price. And it's simply just going to be quantity times price for the item. Quantity will be an integer and the price will most likely be a double. And actually, let's just go ahead and call it subtotal to make it simpler. Now we can get into a little bit of low code here. All I'm gonna do is set up and write a simple function, just return quantity times the price. And we're gonna be able to actually assign these values later on in Flutterflow. So I'm just setting this up now and we can even test it within this custom function uh, tab. So let's say quantity is two and price is four. Let's test run it. Okay, eight, so our function is running properly. So let's go ahead and click save. And now we can set our function arguments. So instead of quantity, we're gonna choose from variable and we're gonna use the widget state of the count controller. And for price, we're gonna do set from variable and we're gonna use the product selection parameter and select the price. And now subtotal will be calculated using that custom function. So let's test it out real quick. Actually, while we're waiting on this, let's just go ahead and set up the other custom function as well, which will be the total price. So a total price is going to be subtotal, subtotal plus the tax plus the shipping. So tax and shipping, you can also set up in the back end, but for time's sake and simplicity, I'm just going to set it up as a specific value. So let's say tax is 1.8% and let's say shipping is 499. So let's go to custom function and let's create a new function for total price. It's going to return a double. And this function is going to take three arguments. It's going to take the subtotal argument as a double. And we'll make this false. It's going to take the tax, which will be a double, and it'll take the shipping cost. So let's go ahead and write our custom function here. So we're just going to return the subtotal plus our subtotal times the tax rate, which is we'll divide by 100 and then we add in shipping as well. Pretty simple. Okay, great, let's go ahead and run it. Oh, yeah, let's go ahead and set this up again like we did previously. So we're gonna pull the subtotal from the cards document since we have previously set up that function. We're gonna set the tax here as 1.8 and we're gonna set the shipping here as 4.8. 99, so In order to make sure that the authentication works, we're gonna make sure we're gonna have to make sure that we set up our Firebase rules properly. So right now, I'm just setting the writing ability to authenticated users and the users collection, uh, primarily to be able to actually write to the database. So now let's go ahead and jump into testing. And we'll come back and refine the number formats. Okay, awesome. Let's go to menu. Oh, I need to adjust the home icon. Let's say we add an espresso. And let's do quantity of two. So great, 2.5 times two should be five. And then times the tax plus 499 should come out to around uh, $10.08. What if we added a T? And let's do quantity of three. Okay, so three times 1.5 plus two times 2.5 
Yep, that makes sense. Should be 950. I'm also going to go ahead and format this number as a dollar amount. So I set the number format to decimal, set the decimal type to automatic. I'm going to select on for display as currency. And for this, I'm going to use a dollar, but you can use the currency of your home country. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for subtotal. And let's reload again. To add a T. Okay. Yep, the number of formats are looking way better and the calculation looks accurate. So it looks like our app is actually properly functioning. Now we only use six pages for this tutorial and set up checkout, but if you're interested in this coffee shop build, let us know in the comments and we can do a build integrating payment systems as well as adding different functionalities that would be useful for a small business. So once again, this is just a primary tutorial and there's many different ways to actually set up the back end as well as the logic here. But I hope it was helpful in understanding how you can actually create a functioning app for your local business, coffee shop or restaurant. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.